Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're going to be going over some leaks and rumors which pertain to AMD's upcoming Ryzen 5000 series CPUs on the desktop. These processors were announced by AMD on the 8th of October and are supposed to hit store shelves next month on the 5th. If you haven't seen my launch coverage where I go over all the important details and give my initial impressions, then I highly recommend checking it out. Link for that will be down below. Now, as you all might be aware, whenever there's new hardware announced with a release date, you'll have companies sending out samples out to the tech press for reviews a few weeks or, you know, a few days before the release date. I believe NDA for these new processors is supposed to be lifted at 9 a.m. Eastern on the 5th of November, so release day. So naturally, you're going to start seeing some more leaked information surrounding these new parts, whether that's benchmarks or other performance-related information. The first leak we're going to go over comes from the Sci Software Sandra Benchmark, reported by Tomb Apisak on Twitter, who is a known hardware leaker. And this database is usually one of the first where data miners like Apisak will find results pertaining to new hardware. Here they reported some leaked benchmarks for 3 out of the 4 SKUs announced which were the Ryzen 9 5950X, Ryzen 9 5900X, and the Ryzen 7 5800X. If you're interested in looking up the results yourself, don't worry, I'll drop a link down below to all of them. Now here you guys can see from the screenshots we've got results for the individual benchmark tests in this software such as CPU arithmetic, processor multimedia, and processor cryptography. Now Harukaze on Twitter was kind enough to put this information for us in this chart which also includes results from the previous gen CPUs and this will give us a pretty good insight on how much things have improved gen on gen. For the processor arithmetic test, we can see some pretty good Good performance improvements. 18% for the Ryzen 7 5800X 8 core CPU, and that is also the same margin when we compare the Ryzen 9 12 core part. However, for the 5950X, it's only about 9% faster when compared to the previous generation 16 core 3950X, so that's rather interesting. It could be perhaps this workload does scale well with frequency, and since the 3950X and 5950X were both already boasting such high frequencies, the performance improvement wasn't that huge. Still though, these numbers do look quite good when we're looking at a gen on gen improvement. Now when we take a look at the multimedia benchmark, here is where we're looking at some really drastic performance improvements. This benchmark clearly looks looks like it performs a lot better on the Zen 3 architecture, and that could be due to lower reduced latency. The Ryzen 7 5800X is trailing right behind the previous Gen 12 core 3900X. Meanwhile, the new 12 core 5900X beats the previous generation 16 core 3950X and improves its performance by a whopping 36% over the 3900X. Wow, that is significantly faster. And we do actually have another slide showing the new 5600X 6 core part beating the 3800X, which is an 8 core part. Clearly, this benchmark is benefiting from the advancements made by AMD on Zen 3, the reduced latency, unified CCXs, higher IPC, and the higher frequency. So these Sci software benchmarks are showing us some promising results, especially the multimedia benchmark, where we're looking at the newer parts beating out parts from the previous generation despite having less cores. But remember, these are synthetic benchmarks after all, and these performance improvements may not translate that well to real-world performance gains such as gaming. Alright, moving on, and the next set of leaks, which also come from Appysack, this guy's just on a roll here, so I recommend giving him a follow on Twitter if you haven't done so already. Now these leaks come from the popular Geekbench 5 benchmark. This benchmark performs various tests on the CPU which measure single core and multi core performance. Here they've linked two results for the Ryzen 9 5900X and the 5950X. So I also ran the benchmark on my personal system which has a 3900X running stock and when we compare my results to the results from the 5900X, the single core performance looks pretty good. A difference of around 20% which is decent. A bit lower than uh, what I was expecting but still pretty decent. However, the multi-core score does look to be a lot lower than where it should be. The 5900X gets 12,869 and the 16 core 5950X also gets lower than my 3900X at 13,605. So I'm not sure as to what could be causing that, perhaps it could be an older engineering sample, an older BIOS, or maybe something else. I did also notice that the versions used between the two benchmarks also differ, but I'm not sure if that could drastically affect results. Because I also had the first version of Geekbench 5 installed, version 5.0, from where you guys just saw my scores from. So I did download the newest version, and my scores did decrease a bit, but it wasn't anything major, and my multi-core score is still higher than the 5900X, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. 
Now, another thing I wanted to point out to you guys, which I know will get a lot of people excited, is the fact that for the 16-core Ryzen 9 5950X, the benchmark actually reported a maximum boost frequency of 5.01 GHz, even though when AMD unveiled the processors, that part was listed at 4.9 GHz boost. Now, while this may seem like a pretty good indication, do keep in mind that with the way Ryzen's boost clocks work, this literally could have been running at 5 GHz for a microsecond during the benchmark, and actually have sustained a lower boost frequency. Now for Geekbench 5, if you add .gb5 at the end of the URL, it'll actually take you to a page where it'll show parameters based off of what the result was, and it'll also show you the frequencies the CPU was running at during the benchmark run. And you guys can see it doesn't actually show any figures at or above 5000 MHz. So like I said, it could have literally been for a small blip, and then the software may have picked up on that and reported it. But this could also be promising for users who might be looking to overclock the processor, and by that I mean fine-tuning the boost algorithm to get a bit more speed out of the CPU. Perhaps we might finally see a working auto OC offset. You know the one I'm talking about, the one where Robert Halleck talked about last year how you could dial in a 200 MHz offset, and now suddenly your frequency curve will be that much higher. But if you have a 3rd gen Ryzen CPU and you dial in an offset, whether it's 100 MHz or 200 MHz for auto OC, I found it barely impacts boost behavior the way it implies. So I'm hoping they might have fixed that feature and allow users to get some more boost frequency out of their CPU, if the silicon lottery allows for it that is, because that's also still very relevant to overclocking. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about since we're on the topic of overclocking that is, there was a leaked press slide from a website called Technopat who are a Turkish hardware site, and they actually leaked a slide which had information pertaining to memory overclocking. I believe this may be a slide from the reviewer's guide which AMD didn't show during their initial announcements of the uh, CPU. Now if you had watched my launch coverage video, this was something I talked about and I was left wondering why AMD never talked about memory overclocking, because that was also one of my biggest concerns. If we'll be able to see higher memory frequency overclocking with Zen and 3, where you can still maintain a 1 to 1 ratio with the Infinity Fabric so as to not incur a latency penalty. Currently on Zen 2, the ceiling is 1900 MHz for the IF, but that's if you're lucky and the sweet spot for most users is 1800 MHz. Now in this slide, AMD are suggesting that DDR4 4000 MHz is to Ryzen 5000 as DDR4 3800 MHz was to the 3000 series, with a good luck at the end. If this slide is legitimate, because there haven't been any confirmations of this from AMD, then what I'll say to that is, I am happy that we are getting an improvement to the ceiling of the Infinity Fabric's clock speeds, and for a 1 to 1 ratio that is. At 4000 MHz, you're going to be running the IF at 2000 MHz, so in terms of memory overclocking, we're looking at a 200 MHz bump from the previous gen that is. Which isn't bad and I'll take it, I was hoping for at least 2200 MHz, but this isn't really that big of a deal for me. If a user can theoretically run 4000 MHz with tight timings like CL15, then they'll have a very fast configuration for their Ryzen 5000 CPU, and that should also help gaming performance as well. How much will it help? Well, we'll have to wait and see for per memory performance scaling tests with these new CPUs in order to know, but overall this does look pretty promising, and I absolutely can't wait to get my hands on one of these new CPUs and do my own testing with it. There's definitely going to be a lot more information coming out in the next couple of weeks, no doubt about that, and I'll be sure to update you guys on it, so stay tuned. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.